Hello, and welcome back to the Test Drive Podcast, brought to you by Sport Car USA. I'm your host, Lee Bodet. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Test Drive Podcast. It's podcast number 38. I'm Lee Bodet, your host. Scott Nickerson from Sport Car USA is joining us as well. I've been a radio broadcaster for over 40 years. I host the series called Test Drive on the YouTube channel. I'm the front man and host of Sport Car USA, and of course, a car enthusiast my entire life. Scott, what do you do with Sport Car USA? Well, you and I kind of both handle all the, the back end stuff with marketing and creating content and getting to talk to some really cool people. And a really cool person is with us today. We're really pleased to have Jonathan Shaw. Jonathan is the president of Hemmings, this great, great magazine that I'm holding up. Got the recent edition, Jonathan, right here. It's uh, January 2024. Can't get any more present yeah. than that. And welcome, Jono. Thank you so much, Lee. Pleasure to be on, on the podcast with you. Uh, Scott, great to meet you as well. Um, happy to see you got, got your latest copy of Hemmings Motor News there. It's got the brand new logo for Hemmings on there, brand new cover imagery and art for us. It's an exciting year. It's been a very exciting year in 2023, and it's going to be a hell of a year in, in 2024 for Hemmings. We're going to really get into Hemmings in just a minute. They're based in Bennington, Vermont. A lot of people don't realize that. Because this magazine goes all over the country, right? And then some. It does, yeah. It, it goes all over the world. Oh, wow. um, we, we're we, from from kind of humble beginnings. So in 2024, we're going to celebrate our 70th anniversary. Wow. Uh, we were started by Ernest Hemmings, where we get our, our namesake from, back in 1954 in Quincy, Illinois. Hmm. Uh, and it started as a four-page pamphlet. Uh, and was mailed to a hundred of his Model A and Model T buddies because they couldn't, they needed some place to have a, a trading post, if you will, to find cars and parts that they uh, wanted to transact with with one another. So here we are, 70 years later. Uh, you know, the book remains 350, 400 pages uh, on average, uh, 30,000 cars for sale at any given time on Hemmings.com. So. Thanks to uh, Ernest's vision uh, and our opportunity to carry that that out, you know we're still collect, uh, connecting the collector car community together now. I'd like to backtrack a little bit, and Jonathan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? We know your nickname is Jono. That's about all we know right now. <laughs> yeah, so I've been um, I've been with Hemmings for about the last four years. Uh, started consulting with Hemmings in 2019 really started with an understanding of you know the online auction space uh my background is in digital product development um i was with hemming's parent company before that um and you know we saw a need uh in the rise of online auctions and kind of the change in how people were buying and selling cars online the opportunity for hemming's to diversify you know beyond just kind of your traditional classified which we you know still run that business but what i think is unique about hemming's is we run three distinct marketplaces now. Uh, so we have our classifieds, both in print and online. Uh, we have a buy now, make offer marketplace, and then we have our live online auctions. Um, so we really, we've we've harnessed this amazing brand that's been built over the last 70 years on a reputation of customer service and trust. And we've started to really flex our muscle uh, in the digital marketplace space uh, and, and really seen tremendous gains for Hemmings. You know, we'll do, Almost 40 million people will visit uh, Hemmings.com this year. Um, so seen really tremendous growth uh, for the online property. Uh, and, the, and the print product remains strong. But that's me from the business side. You might have been asking a little bit more about why uh, why I love cars and why I'm here <laughs> and loving to talk about collector cars. Is that right, Lee? That was my second question, John O. I, I wanted to know, when did you get the car bug? Is it something that was you grew up with or later in life yeah um i i have been really fortunate um kind of in the situation I, I grew up with here in charlotte north carolina uh my parents had a piece of property uh outside of town about 50 acres and my favorite thing in the world to do is wake up you know if i wasn't at preschool uh you know when i was four and five years old was running out to the barn i wanted to climb on the tractor work on the tractor get in the john deere gator uh anything with the motor dirt bikes you know i started out with a little 50 cc honda uh you know kind of little trail bike uh and my love of everything automotive kind of grew from there and 
got out of two wheels into four wheels um and and i just love anything that has an engine i still love going out there they still have the property i still love starting up the tractors and moving things around um but my first automotive memory was uh when i was four climbing myself up into my parents jeep grand wagoneer and i just thought i still think that's one of the coolest cars ever made you know it's gold with the wood pan faux wood paneling it's got a corduroy burgundy interior and i can literally picture it in my head trying to climb it climb up in it and it's like a monster truck to me at the time i just think it's the coolest thing in the world and and that was that's my first car memory um outside of riding around you know the back seat that faced the wrong way you know yeah, the well, oncoming yeah. traffic in my <laughs> in my mom's buick regal station wagon <laughs> yeah. back then you know yeah um so yeah that's that's when my love of cars started uh, my grandfather loved hot rods and we shared that passion, uh, together. I learned how to drive in his 1954 Chevy Bel Air. Um, that was what I, I used, uh, to drive around my learner's permit with him on Saturdays, cruising the country roads outside of Charlotte when Charlotte still had country roads. Now it's a behemoth city and, right. and continues to grow. But, um, yeah, I, I, I love it. I still love it. I, I'm, feel like probably like you guys do i found a cheat code in life where i get to talk about cars and work with cars really cool cars every single day and it makes it not feel like work you yeah, know no yeah. question about it here at sport car usa we buy and sell modern muscle cars so we're yeah. about three years old and we're loving it we've sold about three million dollars worth in three years so yep. it's been a lot a lot of fun and we get to drive them around too yeah. which is the fun part we <laughs> yeah. go, we yeah, like, oh we gotta go film something yeah. and then we just drive some cars around and yeah now, you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, so are you a NASCAR fan? I mean, that's like the heart of NASCAR country right there. Yeah, it's hard It's hard to grow up here and, and not be a NASCAR fan. So I'm, I'm definitely a NASCAR fan. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I loved Kyle Petty. Um, our family was in the NASCAR media business with some old titles. People might recognize like Winston Cup Scene newspaper mm -hmm. and NASCAR Illustrated magazine. Um, so I was fortunate I got to kind of go behind the scenes on some garage days and stuff and meet the drivers and everything. And NASCAR then was super approachable and the guys just had such amazing personalities. Um, were really fun to fun to be around. Kyle Petty put me up on his shoulders and <laughs> you know carried me from the grandstands down to his car and put me in the passenger seat and told me we we're going for a ride. Uh, that's and that's something I'll never forget. That was pretty cool. That is totally awesome. It really is. We're talking with Jonathan Shaw. He's the president of Hemmings. And I just looked through this current Hemmings, January 2024 issue, Jonathan. I see color pictures, auctions, editorials, cars for sale. How would you describe this magazine? Uh, I, I would say the number one thing it is, is a resource. Um, you know, if you're looking for services for you know, a, an oddball making model, they're going to be in there. Um, you know, there's a lot of really amazing businesses in there from, you know, really well established folks like Holly and Coker, uh, all the way to, you know, people who are specializing in a certain make model convertible top. You can kind of get a little bit of everything uh, in the magazine. Beyond that, you know, I still I still tell people the the uncovered gold is it, the, a lot of times is still in the book um, it, and it, you're going to find it in a word ad. So there's no photos of the car uh, or anything. And it's in a tiny little word ad. Uh, but there's a, there's gold in those hills for sure of, of really unique cars, makes and models at great prices. A lot of times from the original owners um, and, and you can get a one owner really unique car out of there. Yeah, I, I definitely think like something that we've come across in kind of the more classic car scene or antique car scene is that a lot of the younger folks are not getting into it as well. So you probably have some of these, you know, older folks who are selling these cars that aren't going to have high res photos of them or, you know, they're not going to be publishing them online or responding to online ads. So, you know, that's like you said, that's a great place for that stuff. You're exactly right, Scott. Um, you know, for, fortunately, one of the things we talk about internally here, you know, when we're trying to sell a car on the on Hemmings.com, you know, we want like really uh, photos sell the car. If you're going to sell a car sight unseen, you need to have a really great description. You need to have really great photos. You need to be very upfront about the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, you know, in the car. It, it creates a level of trust, um, you know, and 
and what we've seen is is as people continue you know even the even the older generations they use their cell phones to text all the time because they want to get in touch with the grandkids yep. right yep. and and so we're starting to see that adoption by you know our long long time readers and constituents that are in print starting to really adopt the dot com because they're starting to you know really gain skill uh in, in that area but yeah, on the on the photo front, yeah, that's something we've worked through. It's been a, a little bit of a challenge getting the high res photos. We offer, you know, photo services, so you know we can arrange a third party to come shoot the car for you. We've tried cool. to break down some of those barriers, but yeah, you're right about that. Seventy years is a long time, John O. And tell us how this magazine—you call it a magazine, right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a magazine. Okay, a magazine says Motor News and Marketplace. How have how has Hemmings evolved in the 70 years? There has to be so many different changes. Number one, I, I, it was probably never even close to this being thick. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the, the big days before all the all the dot com, e com, uh, everything, you know, it was probably, you know, now it's it's probably 400 pages on average. It was probably 500 pages before everybody really started, you know, harnessing the power of the dot com on Hemmings.com. Um, but you you know, there's been a lot of change. What we continue to want to focus on in the in the print book is really good resource content, really good how to buyers guides, pricing valuation and analysis. Uh, we have an amazing uh, editor, uh, Mike McNesser of Motor News, and he's continued to shepherd that product. You know, it remains the number one uh, automotive title on uh, newsstands today. Uh, and I think that speaks to just, you know, we found the right formula and what the readers want and continue to serve that. But we've broadened the coverage base, right? So now you're seeing 80s and 90s cars, you know, in the collector world are starting to get really hot. So third gen IROC Z Camaros, uh, you're seeing Fox Body Mustangs. And to that end, on our YouTube channel, on, on Hemming's YouTube channel, last year we did a 1987 IROC Z build. This year we're doing a Fox Body build. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're continuing to understand that the media landscape has changed. We want to remain really strong in print with our offering, but at the same time, putting a content and, and original digital content online at Hemmings.com, developing our YouTube presence uh, is really important because, as you know, you know, it's no longer uh, that people are pulling you off the newsstand all the time. You've got to push yourself into their news feed. Uh, and if you want to be relevant to the younger generations, you've got to be where they're consuming content, whether that's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform they're on, we've got to have an offering there if we're going to stay relevant. And we've done a fabulous job of doing that this year. We put a lot of effort against that this year. And next year, uh, we're really excited. We're bringing over eight, ser eight new series uh, to our YouTube channel. That's awesome. I, I was watching a couple... Uh, I think I actually watched the IROC episode, um, someone cutting through the hills. I'm like, wow, it must be nice to be in uh, warm weather climates year round because uh, we have, a, you know, this is kind of our off season as far as filming. We can't get out and uh, shoot with cars driving around right now. But um, yeah, it's fun. I always see cars. Uh, lots of companies are based out in like the California area and stuff that do that sort of thing. And yeah, you know, it's definitely an yeah, advantage for that. And, and it's interesting too, I noticed, you know, I, I, I being spoiled here in North Carolina, particularly the Southern part of the state in Charlotte, you know, it doesn't get too bad. We really don't salt the roads. So, you know, we're not Florida or Texas or California with year round driving, but we're pretty, pretty good. Uh, I noticed when I got, got to Hemmings back in 2019, how the content shifted over the months, right? It was a lot about working in the garage kind yep. of from from january you know through march until the roads cleaned up a lot of car maintenance articles and and things like that and so we need to make sure one we continue to fill that bucket for the folks who can't drive year round in in the northeast northwest and canada uh but continue to feed really good you know kind of action coverage for the year-round states yeah great point scott yeah we're definitely looking at making stuff garage tours <laughs> yeah. or you know stuff that we can shoot inside the podcast has been great for that because we can just sit down and uh, we don't have to worry about getting outside with cars. Tell us about Bennington, Vermont. Why Bennington, Vermont? <laughs> Great question. Um, <laughs> so 
Uh, the gentleman, the gentleman who purchased Hemmings uh, from Ernest Hemmings uh, was a gentleman by the name of Terry Eric. Uh, and Terry Eric was the owner and had my role as the president for many, many years uh, until he passed away um, from an illness. And his brother Perez took it over. Um, they were Bennington natives. Um, and when they brought it to town, uh, you know, they were, uh, Hemings was the uh, second largest employer in Bennington, uh, you know, behind, um, I think, Bennington College. Uh, and we remain one of the largest employers in Bennington. And we love Bennington. I love Bennington. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great place to be. Uh, the employees there are just absolutely fantastic. The culture there is sneaky. Um, we've got a, a video that we're going to debut this coming year before our, our 2024 cruise in series that's called One Perfect Day. And we go around to various neat car cities across the U.S. and we film a video of what is our perfect day in Austin, Texas? What is our perfect day in Memphis, Tennessee, going to the Edelbrock plant, et cetera, et cetera. And we filmed one this year on Bennington before our last cruise in. And we went through the rich collector car history of, of Bennington and the greater Vermont area, and it's deep. Um, there, there are some amazing builders here. Uh, there's some great history, and and I would tell anybody come come to the Hemmings office in Bennington, come see us, visit the museum uh, down below, uh, and have a good time. Yeah, we may have to take a little field trip, Lee. I like that. Yes, road trip. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to tell you, uh, when I was growing up, I remember Hemmings very well, but I never knew it was based in Vermont, and it really surprised me one day when I got a model truck. And it was a Hemmings truck. And the box said Bennington, Vermont. I'm thinking, what? I mean, what's this all about? So I still think to this day, people don't realize this national magazine is based in Bennington, Vermont, which is really cool. And, and I, I love that. You know, it, it is it has become, you know, a worldwide brand. Um, just, you know, tons of distribution across the U.S., but... Yeah, we've got strong footholds in in uh, the Netherlands and Sweden and the UK and and that part of Europe. Um, I, I think it's one of the you know most fun things um, you know is is being from a small town, employing an amazing number of people in a small town, and and having a national impact. I I, I hope will show other brands how you can build really great businesses in Vermont. There's an amazing employment base there. Uh, and would love to see, you know, folks come into Vermont to, to, you know, host and build businesses for sure. And you were here before Ben and Jerry's. Wow. Yes, we were. That's <laughs> right. And we're still here. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. You're almost as old as this magazine, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> we won't go there. We won't <laughs> go there. What does the future hold for Hemmings? What's your... Uh... Yes. Your vision. Yeah, so we're, we're going to continue to focus on the marketplace business for Hemmings, continue to pump out the resource content. Uh, I, I already mentioned the YouTube series in 24 and continue to grow our vid video efforts. Um, we have, you know, you, you guys have probably been to our Muscle Palooza events that we put on at, at Lebanon Valley. There's There was such a cry every single year when we put it on and we wrote about it. We get letters and comments and everything. Why do you just do it there? Uh, and so this year, uh, we're we're spreading Muscle Palooza across the country. So we'll be in at four different drag strips this year with vintage, modern muscle, street cars, muscle trucks, with both show uh, and drag racing, bracket drag racing with payouts uh, that we're really, really excited about. In April, on April 13th, we'll be at Maple Grove, the historic Maple Grove dragway in Pennsylvania. Uh, on in uh, let's see, May 11th will be at Dragway 42 in Ohio with Muscle Palooza Midwest, uh, and uh, in October on October 14th we'll be down in Orlando uh, with Muscle Palooza Southeast down there in Orlando at the Orlando Speed World, and then uh, I'll come back on and announce Muscle Palooza Texas when we've got wow. the date for that, but we'll be in Texas as well this year with our Muscle Palooza events. Those are really fun. Kids under 12 get in free. 
Uh, I went to numerous car shows with my grandfather growing up and it really fueled my passion. We want to do the same thing. We want to make it family friendly. Uh, so there's, you know, car shows, vendor midway, there's drag racing. If you want to get into that, there's going to be car corrals supporting the Hemmings marketplace and giving people a place to buy and trade, which is really how we started. It's, uh, uh, so we're really, really pumped to bring Muscle Palooza back four times in 2024. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we host, uh, now it'll be one show. We used to do kind of like a once a month thing over the summer, uh, but that's, we're right in the same thing. We're not doing drag racing or anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, it's all about the kids and the family and getting everybody involved. Uh, and that's kind of the formula we've gone with. So we'll have to get you back up here or up here in general. And we'll yeah. also send you one of our Sport Car USA calendars as soon as they come out. Definitely. Yes, please. I would love that. Um, cool. I, I'm curious. You know, in the in the modern sports car world, you know, uh, how has that market changed? And and you know, kind of, what's the what's the buying and selling volume in, in that world right now? And you know, we just had a, a C6 Z06 go through the site yesterday. Uh, that one was on my bucket list. I yeah. I really want a C6 Z06. I it wasn't the right time for me, um, but. Yeah. One day I'll get one of those, but I'm I'm curious kind of what you, what's on your hot list right now. Well, I would just say that EV seems to be on everybody's mind, and whether that's going to come to fruition, <laughs> it sounds like it's going to, whether we like it or not. At some point. I, I think it's a wonderful thing. However, there's a fear of losing the modern muscle car. Uh, yep. That's kind of why we that's our our niche, and people are kind of like gobbling them up because they're so afraid that they're going to be non-existent before you know it right i mean you're looking at like the the challenger and charger are done production the camaro's done production basically the only thing that's left is uh the newest mustang the dark horse and the new 5.0 mustangs so yeah that's definitely like the impending doom of the combu internal yeah. combustion engines uh that's kind of like worked to our advantage in some ways where you know we a lot of times buy stuff from people who either uh, can't or won't store something for the winter, uh, especially around here. And in Vermont, we have such a short season for driving these cars that they're usually super low miles. Yeah. You know, like we're getting sometimes under a thousand mile sports cars that are five years old. Um, wow. So yeah, I think the market is super interesting for these kind of cars, mostly just because nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah. And we've seen a lot of chargers and challengers. Those have been oh, our, yeah. challengers are our biggest movers, I think. So, yeah. And I think they kind of yeah, represent I, that classic muscle the most out of anything. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Lee. I'm really bullish on the future of collector cars. And, and I think the cars you're trading in on the modern muscle side fall in those collector buckets for sure. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, as the cars become more autonomous, uh, as they lose kind of the the feel, uh, kind of the auditory sensation, et cetera, you know, I think I think people are going to drive that, you know, Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday, they're going to want an internal combustion engine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I've been asked that question before and, and continue to believe, you know, there's a there's a strong future for uh internal combustions and you know american made v8s and everything into the future because people are going to want that experience it's going to become an experiential thing so i think the weekend car is going to become a much bigger phenomenon in the u.s than it is even today yeah and that's really what sport car usa is all about we've positioned ourselves to be the one-stop place if you're looking for an internal combustion engine vehicle Exactly. And um, we get calls from all over the country, even shipped a Corvette to Australia. Yep. Yeah. It, it's well, crazy. I'm, I'm going to be on. I'm going to get my my safe search <laughs> set up on the inventory now and, and be on the lookout for my Corvette in the future here. There you go. Yeah, we'll, I know. We'll take care of you. I know you talked about the uh, you said that it was the Grand Wagoneer, that some some cars like that, that you owned or your family owned as a kid. Is there anything that's come through Hemmings that you've like? drooled over or had like some nostalgia for you or i know you said that that z06 you wanted to get but is there anything else that you have gobbled up um or? yes there's a there's right now there's a 1978 gmc jimmy beautiful square body california truck i've got that one of my favorites right now <laughs> um so I'm, I'm sitting on that one um 
I love, you know, from the British sports car perspective, my grandfather had an MG TF 1500. Uh, I would love to work on one of those one day. Anytime a CJ8 Scrambler comes up, my first car was a 96 Jeep TJ. Anytime a CJ8 Scrambler comes up, I, I want it because I want to work on it with my boys. Oh, yeah. uh, I've got I've got two boys, nine and seven. They love cars. When they were kids, <laughs> they were putting their power wheels up on jack stands trying to act like <laughs> act like dad in the garage I so that's it. pretty cool so it. when when it, when the time is right i'm gonna get one of those and and build a project with my boys do you ever go to any of the large auctions like barrett jackson or meekum i've been down to kissimmee uh been out to scottsdale uh been to each of those one time uh been to some regional stuff too gaa is great here in north carolina yeah. gaa auctions they're a good partner of ours um it's crazy i mean the throughput uh, and and number of vehicles is is really something there but you got to know what you're doing um there's there's so many cars and you know you, all you can do is kind of put your eyes on it and you know hope that you're you're getting the best kind of description and everything of the vehicle um you know i would tell i would tell anybody you know bring your mechanic with you mm. uh if you're not mechanically inclined yourself uh, or see if you can get a pre-purchase inspection uh, of the car done. And I, I'd say the same thing for people buying on Hemmings. Uh, you know, reach out to the buyer, get the background on it. You know, if it's older than 1980, get the Carfax on it. Uh, we provide that in the auction and make offer for you. Uh, and order a pre-purchase inspection. That's uh, something we're going to be integrating into Hemmings in 2024 is your ability to get cars inspected really quick. That's great. Love yeah. that. We, uh, we're going to be down in Kissimmee this year, so we're going to be do going down for a couple of days. It'll be our first big show. I know we sent a couple of people out to SEMA last year to just kind of look around and check it out, uh, and we saw that the Hemmings had a few vehicles there last year. Not the, a couple months ago last year, but the year before that. Um, how, is, how is it with doing projects for SEMA? Um, everything with SEMA, even when you plan it, you know, a year plus in advance comes down to what they call the SEMA crunch. <laughs> it's like every little thing comes down to kind of the last minute. There's a lot of logistics involved with getting a car to SEMA, not just from kind of securing a space uh, down to, you know, load in, load out. They're very specific on even the amounts of fuel that can be in the car uh, to not lessen the fire hazards with the cars that are oh, parked wow. inside. Um, so it's, it's, it's a blast though. I mean, SEMA really does have like the best of the best, um, there and, and is really an opportunity for, you know, the brands partner with the best builders. Uh, this year we partnered with classic car studio out of St. Louis, Missouri, and had, uh, an F 600 there, mm. uh, 1956 F 600, <laughs> um, wow. that was powered by five, nine Cummins had over 3000 hours of hand metal fab in the build was really something special. It was a showstopper and brought a lot of people into our booth, which we loved. And um, yeah, SEMA, SEMA is a beast. Uh, but if, if you haven't been to SEMA, uh, they've started to open it up on the Fridays. You know, it started as just a trade conference. So you had to be in the industry. But on Fridays, uh, they let consumers in. Um, so if you haven't been, uh, there's, a, there's a chance to get into SEMA and see these world-class builds now. Yeah, I definitely hope that we get to make the trip out to Vegas next year. And they added all this other stuff with like SEMA Fest and they made it like a big party now. So, yeah, yeah. So what are the ways to get the Hemmings magazine? Tell us again. Yeah, so go to Barnes & Noble, get us off the newsstand. Uh, again, number one title in automotive there. Uh, you can uh, go to Hemmings.com because if you're just getting the, the print title, you're not getting the whole thing. Um, so uh, we've got a lot of content on there. I think right now, we launched this this past year. We already have 40,000 users on it right now. We launched it in March. Download the Hemmings Marketplace app on your smartphone. I think that is the cleanest, easiest, fastest way to go through 30,000 cars. Um, so yeah, check that out. And then come see us at Musclepalooza. Yeah, uh, you guys need to come see us yeah, at we Musclepalooza. Do. Oh, yeah. We need to have you to Maple. <laughs> come to Maple Grove, and yeah. uh, we can do a live show from Maple Grove. Well, when we go there, Jono, we won't be driving an EV to get there, just so you know. No, this will be a good excuse to uh, have, have our GM <laughs> book us a flight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Jono, we want to thank you very much for being with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, a lot of information, 
Love to meet you in person, as we just kind of mentioned. And uh, if you're ever up to northern Vermont, make sure you stop by and see us at Sport Car USA. I will. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go on Sport Car USA uh, <laughs> yes. and check out the Dot inventory com. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lee, definitely. Scott, thank yes. you both so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah thanks really for coming in. Thank you very much. There he is, Jonathan Shaw, who's the president of Hemmings. We really appreciate him being with us today. Scott Nickerson from Sport Car USA, thank you as well. I want to thank everybody for listening to our Test Drive podcast number 38. I'm Lee Bodet, your host. Be sure to check out our Test Drive series on YouTube, and we'll see you next time on our next Test Drive podcast. And remember, let's never forget the men and women serving this great country of ours. Goodbye, everybody.